Hello, hello, this is Joe from uh, Nerd in Korea. We are doing our budget interesting commanders, continuing to look at the uh, top EDH rec theme budget uh, commanders, and we're looking at the treasure theme this time. So commanders that like treasures. Treasures are great, so this is going to be a good one. Again, the treasure theme. So last week we covered the token commanders. A particular powerful type of token is the treasure token. Treasure tokens are very, very good tokens, yeah. These are powerful because they allow you to make mana by tapping and sacrificing them. So, well, green will probably usually want to do like land ramp and things like that. Red will often rely more on things like treasure tokens, where you're just producing a whole bunch of these tokens that you can ju just tap and then sack and get a whole pile of mana from. Um, in some situations, I think treasures are even better. They're going to outperform land ramp. Uh, yeah. Treasures can be much easier to make than la lands to ramp, especially for some colors. So green is great at land ramp, a lot of other colors are not, and that's where treasures are probably a better option. Please hit like and subscribe, it makes a huge difference. Um, I feel like I'm trying to like rebuild this channel. I took a bunch of uh, not great advice from another channel about how to get more viewers and it just like crashed my viewers into the, into the wall or into the ground, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, so please do hit like and subscribe. In the 99, okay. Merkwood Bats, three and a black for a two, three flyer. Not bad. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. So you're going to make the treasure token and then you're going to sack it. Meaning you get one mana and all of your opponents lose two life for each one made where Mark Road Bats is out. That's crazy. You can even just like amass treasures and then play Mark Road Bats and then sacrifice all the treasures at once to just like hopefully win the game. One dollar. I can't believe this is still one dollar. I got to order more of these. Crime Novelist. This is another one I expected. I think it was around five bucks at one point and now for some reason is low, but anyway. Two and a red for a one, one. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, add, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on Crime Novelist and add a red mana. Every time you sacrifice an artifact, treasures are artifacts. So every time you sacrifice a treasure, you're making one, color, one mana of any color and an additional red, and you're going to put a plus one, plus one on the Crime Novelist. Um, you're basically doubling mana from treasures. It's crazy. You know, a 56 cents. So should not be a 56 cent card. Anyway, Mahadi, Emporium Master, one black red. Rakdos, three, three. At the beginning of your end step, and create a... Uh, sorry, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. Once again, if you've got some kind of sacrifice deck or effect, this is huge. Even if you're just doing a lot of combat, again, Rakdos loves combat, Rakdos loves sac effects. Um, if you're doing either of those, you can very easily make a whole bunch of treasure. Um, really just turning any kind of like creatures dying into value for you, including tre uh, token creatures. So 30 cents. Number five, Roxanne Starfall Savant. All right, so uh, she is three, red, green, a little pricey for a four, three. Whenever she enters the battlefield, uh, create an artifact token named Meteorite that deals two damage to any target, and you can tap it to add one mana of any color. Sounds okay, not great, right? It's kind of odd for an ETB, but... <clears throat> Whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, add one mana of any type that artifact token produced. So she's going to make an extra mana every time you tap. If you tap a treasure, create a mana, you're making two mana. And if you have Prime Novelist, you're making three mana. Oh boy. Anyway. You do have to tap artifact tokens. That's the important part. Artifact tokens. Not just tap artifact, right? Not just tap token. Artifact token that creates mana. Anyway, th she's in 2,673 decks. I actually did uh, a deck tech on this. I'm gonna try to remember to put it in the corner. Um, 
I really like that one. I thought that was super strong. I believe I did a dragon some sub theme with that. So Roxanne does not have to be built with treasures in mind, but any token can be tapped for mana, like ones she makes. Again, if you can flicker her, she'll make a whole bunch of those, right? She'll make meteorites, and you can just do that instead. G red and green aren't great for flickering. You probably want like something where uh, maybe put her in a Naya deck or something like that, right? Where you can add white and have a lot of easier flicker, but yeah, that'll add up quick. Uh, power stones are also a great option for extra mana she creates. All right, so remember, she creates the mana, right? So power stones, they're very good, but they can only be used to cast like artifacts and activate abilities of artifacts, I believe. She makes a mana on top of that. The mana she makes does not have any restriction. So yeah, you tap the power stone, you can only use that mana for an artifact. She makes an extra mana that you can use for anything. So yeah, very easy to abuse, one dollar. All right, so Savella Ice Shaper, I feel like I'm saying it wrong, one red green for a two four. And for three, you can tap Savella, create a color snow artifact token named Icy Manolith with tap add one mana of any color. Once again, with your commander out, that's two mana. You're making a, a mana dork for three that will produce any color of mana and will make two of any color of mana. That's nuts, that's nuts. Okay, and for six red green, look at the top four cards of your library, you may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest in the, the in, uh, uh, sorry, put the rest on the bottom of your library with a, in a random order. I can't say that, try to say a whole bunch of words at the same time or they just all get, anyway. Um, yeah, so it's great early game. You can do the making mana lists, which are going to make two mana for each time. And then later game, when you've got this pile of mana, you can start just like using her other ability to like keep getting things, not quite tutor, but yeah, look at the top few cards and then put one of them straight into the battlefield, like cast. So, you know, it's eight. It sounds high, but you in the top four, especially if you've got things like I did where dragons, dragons will have that high casting cost. So it's kind of like you're getting a not quite tutor, a scry tutor effect ish. And then, yeah, free casting. Um, it works out quite nicely for 21 cents. Jolene, plundering pug list. Pug list? I feel like I don't know how to say that word. Uh, again. One red green, so gruel again for a 4-2. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures with power 4 or greater, create a treasure token. So she's just going to make treasure tokens. You're a gruel. Especially if you're doing the dragon sub-theme. Four is like one creature probably is going to be four. One flyer, and you're making a treasure on top of it. And then you can sacrifice a treasure for one or red. Jolene Plundering Puglis deals one damage to any target. Also with like damage increase effects, like a lot, red has a lot of those where yeah, you can increase the damage from red sources. She does count as a red source. So if you make that into two, you're already getting into like, can I take a player out with this kind of territory? It is not mana cheap is my major um, complaint about that. And ingenious artillerist um, for two and a red is a three one. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, he deals that much damage to each opponent. So you're going to keep making those treasures or any artifact, including the, you know, the Manolith or the Meteorite that she makes when she enters, and that's automatically going to do damage as well. Meteorite does damage and he'll do an extra damage. Anyway, 25 cents. Number four. Admiral Brass Unsinkable. Okay. Uh, I definitely need some coffee. Two and Grixis. So uh, green, black, red for a 3-3. Three, three. When she enters the battlefield, mill four cards. Mill sounds like a bad thing. It's not. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may return a target pirate creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. It has base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. It gains haste until end of turn. So you're just taking any pirate that's in your graveyard. You can just throw it straight back into the battlefield. It becomes a 4-4 four, four with haste. It's going to have all of its other abilities. And uh, yeah, it has a finality counter. That means if it dies, it gets exiled. It doesn't go to the graveyard. Um, still, you're basically free casting things from your graveyard. Every combat, you're getting an extra pirate out there. Um, that's crazy good. She's in 4,566 decks. I do not see a lot of Grixis commanders on these lists. So it's kind of nice to see her. Um, again, Pirate Kindred is great with treasures. She doesn't actually have anything that says treasure in her, right? Or on her card. There's no mention of treasure whatsoever. Uh, pirate and treasures go together very, very well. So yeah. It's a kindred that kind of the cohesion of, between pirate and treasure is what makes it her a treasure commander. Anyway, 30 cents. Here we go. So Malcolm, keen-eyed navigator for two and a blue is a 2-2. Two -two. I love Malcolm. I built a commander deck from Commander Legends. We did a draft and I built a commander deck with uh, him and another pirate uh, partner captains. A pirate deck and I just stomped. It was great. Um, I love this guy. Alright, so Flying 2-2, two -two, as I said. Whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to an opponent, you may create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. Oh boy. That ain't not... That can be a lot of... Um, excuse me. That can be a lot of uh, treasure, basically, right? In the Commander game, there's probably like three treasure you can get per combat. Um, not too shabby for 22 cents. Then we've got Admiral Beckett, Brass, 1, and Grixis. So uh, again, blue, black, red. For a 3-3, three, three, other pirates you control get plus 1, plus 1. A Lava Anthem effect. At the beginning of your end step, put a... Uh, <clears throat> gain control of target per non-land permanent. Controlled by a player who has dealt damage, combat damage by 3 or more pirates this turn. So, again, if you get that damage through with things like flying or evasion or whatever you have, if you, you get it through with three or more, you get to steal any non-land permanent. So you're just stealing their stuff, which is very piratey. 30 cents only. Skeleton crew. Um, this is more focused on the commander and the commander's abilities. I think Admiral Beckett Brass, even though she is another Admiral Bre Beckett, it... Uh, She's not really, yeah. Synergize is more with the pirates than with the commander. So this is all about the commander. Skeleton crew, three and a black. I guess it's a pirate also, but anyway. For a three, three, each creature you control, that's a skeleton or a pirate, gets plus one, plus one. Another anthem effect, very nice. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, put a two, two black skeleton pirate creature token into play. So she's just going to keep pulling things. Every combat, she's going to pull another pirate out of your graveyard. And every time you do that, you get to make another pirate token. A 2-2 two, two pirate token, that's going to be a 3-3 three, three with skeleton crew on the battlefield. Or a 4-4 four, four if Admiral Beckett Brass is out. So you're just going to keep, like, stockpiling those bonuses, basically. 79 cents. Number 3. Megda, Brazen Outlaw. Okay, she's in almost 10,000 decks. That's not a small amount, that's for sure. Um, so for one or red, she's a 2-1. She is a Dwarf Berserker. I feel like she's Brazen Outlaw, maybe make her like a mercenary or something. I know she came out before all of their like outlaw mechanics, but it still seems weird. All right, so 85 cents. Other dwarves you control get plus one attack. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. So just anything you can do to tap dwarves, make treasure. Things like vehicles, things like a uh, saddle. These are great for, you just tap and you don't have to risk them is what's really great. You can just keep like doing it over and over and getting that value and creating all of those treasures. 
Remember, these aren't like tap treasures or anything. These are just like, you can right away, your main two, you've got a bunch of extra mana for tapping dwarves. You don't even have to like risk them or do anything. Remember with things like saddle, you need the minimum amount. So if it's saddle two, you could tap all of your dwarves, even if their total is like 12, and be like, they're saddling this one thing. That's okay, you can do that. So it lets you tap however many you want. Really? Which is great anyway, yeah. Sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So for each five treasures, you can just go get a dragon and throw it into the battlefield or any artifact, but probably dragon. Um, I do like dragon and treasure synergy because they, you know, dragon's only real downside is the high CMC and treasures cover that. So you're happy. Uh, yeah, five treasures for a dragon is just gonna be like, even the CMC is probably gonna be higher than five. It's an insane value right there. So we've got Magmatic Galleon for a three red red is a five five vehicle. Again, this actually is not on the EDH rack, which it should be. Once in a while, EDH rack is usually pretty re reliable for having like the cards I think it should have. Every once in a while, it's definitely missing something. It's missing this. So when it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls. It costs five, so five damage. If that was all, it would be bad. This is also a five five vehicle. So it's a vehicle, when it ETBs, you're getting 5 damage on any creature you want. And, whenever one or more creatures your opponent's control uh, are dealt excess non-combat damage, create a treasure token. So if you target something when it comes in, if you target something that has like 4 toughness or less, you're making a treasure token. And every time you cast something like a lightning bolt on something with less than like three toughness, making a treasure token, you're turning all of these effects into like t treasure token generators as well, which with her means you're turning them into dragons. Oh boy. Anyway, 20 cents. 20 cents only. Another one. I always keep saying, I gotta order, I gotta order. But yeah, I gotta order. Anyway. Adaptive Automaton. This one's gone up in price, I'm bummed. Um, it's still a budget, but getting out of my budget range. Three for a two-two. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It counts as the chosen creature type, so you're gonna choose probably dwarf. Um, other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. One of the things I like about this is that you are doing kind of like a hybrid kindred, kindred which usually is giving up some of your functionality. So you're going to do dwarves and dragons with Magda. This one lets you choose which one it is. So probably you're going to use, you want to use it as a dwarf, but if you've already got your dwarves and your treasures going and you pull this later game, great. Have it come in as a dragon and just give that anthem effect to all your dragons so you can end the game earlier. So yeah, he really, that flexibility really matters with Adaptive Automaton, where a lot of other things, like if you just have a bonus to dragons, that's nice if you got dragons. If you just got your dwarves, then it doesn't matter. But anyway, 168, Vault Robber for one or red is a 1-3. Pay one, exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a treasure token for 13 cents. Red is not great at recursion, so I kind of look at this as like value. Um, I wish it was exile a creature from anyone's graveyard, but you know what? From your graveyard, you get to still make treasure. It does cost you one mana, but you're still making the treasure, which is what really matters, right? You get the treasure, you get the dragon, you win the game. So anyway, 13 cents for that one. Number two. Vihan, Gold Waker, Mardu! Yeah, he is red, white, black. For those of you who don't know, Mardu is probably my favorite three color combination. If you're like having a draft and you just wanna like stomp in the draft, 
just go Mardu. Most of the time, it's like, you're just gonna go in and just be like hyper aggressive and like hit things. You can do at least, you can usually make at least a solid Mardu deck out of like, what doesn't maybe look like much, if you go Mardu, it'll, it'll pay off. Anyway, he is in 3719 decks. Uh, other outlaws you control have Vigilance and Haste. Outlaw I really like because it's, what is it called? A banding, I think? Where you can put a whole bunch of different um, kindred types or creature types in and it still works together. It kind of creates synergy where you wouldn't have kindred synergy. It's almost like a secondary kindred, but anyway, yeah. Other outlaws that you control have Vigilance and Haste. Vigilance and Haste? Oh boy. Vigilance, I think, I've said this before, if you're going to give your whole board one effect, Vigilance is probably the best thing to have. I think Vigilance is maybe not that impressive when you have like one or two creatures with the Vigilance, unless they're like mana dorks, but if it's your whole board, then you can just like attack every turn and not worry about like having to block. It just changes the whole, like, the way combat works, the, the entire math of it just goes out the window. It makes it simple, basically. That's why I love it. And haste is always lovely, too. Anyway. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have treasures you control become 3-3 three, three Construct Assassin Artifact Creature Tokens in addition to their other types until end of turn. So again, Assassin is a type of outlaw, and yeah. You can just, all of your treasures, again, you can build up treasures very easily, so you can use them for mana value, or he lets you just straight up turn them into like creatures. Three, three assassins. So yeah, definitely leaning into assassin is a good idea. If you get a couple anthem effects for uh, assassins, like a couple of plus one plus ones, turn these three threes into five fives, you could probably just swarm the board with that, right? Anyway, 50 cents. So uh, we got Bayek of Siwa. I feel like I'm saying it wrong again. Uh, always. Three red white, so Boros, three, four, double strike. We like some double strike. As long as it's your turn, other historic creatures you control have double strike. Again, so historic means legendaries, which most of your creatures aren't gonna be, but your commander is. It means uh, sagas, which can't really get double strike, and it means artifacts. All of your treasures that you're making into these assassins are going to be artifacts as well, right? So they're historic. That means everything becomes these like three, three assassins that you, hopefully you're gonna make into four fours or better. And uh, they're gonna have vigilance and they're gonna have um, double strike. Vigilance, haste, double strike. Oh boy, that's a lot of that's a lot of attack power coming in very quickly, right? 170. Also, sorry, he has disguise for one uh, one red white, so you can play him face down for three mana and then end up paying more mana. Uh, having a face down creature can discourage people from attacking you because they're like, yeah, there's some kind of trick here. I don't know what it is. So for sucking people out, that's nice, but anyway. Okay, Blood Bunny, five black black, destroy all creatures. For each non-token creature destroyed this way, you create a tap treasure token. All right, as long as you've got mana to recast your commander, do this, and then yeah, on the following turn, sorry, you're probably gonna, these are tap treasure tokens, so you gotta wait until the following turn, recast your commander, in your main one and then in your combat you're just going to make basically all of those the, the huge pile of treasures you made into uh creatures that are going to go and just like win the game anyway 99 cents uh gray water uh sorry gray waters fixer two black red for a four four each outlaw creature card in your graveyard has encore x where x is his mana value so Encore just means like you can cast it again and you get a copy for each opponent you have and then they just go attack those opponents and well you exile the card. So the card's gone but you can probably get 
so much extra value out of that. It gives you another option, and options are really the most powerful thing in this game. So yeah, 25 cents. Number one, Walt Disney. No, not really, but you know. I know, I, I've never really played these games, to be honest. I didn't play, I played a little bit of Fallout New Vegas, but I don't really know anything about Mr. House. I've definitely seen memes about how he looks like Walt Disney. Um, I think he, that was his, it must have been his inspiration. It's the mustache, yeah. Anyway, Mr. House, President and CEO. Um, another Mardu, hey, Mardu. So red, white, black for a zero four. Kind of an odd one, but all right. And now I feel like I'm gonna sneeze and I'm not sneezing, so that's fun. Whenever you roll four or higher, create a three, three colorless robot artifact creature token. If you roll six or higher, instead create a token and a treasure. So you get a three, three robot and a treasure if you roll six or higher. So if you're rolling a six sided dice, that's a one in six chance, right? Not very good. If you're rolling a 20-sided dice, six or higher, that's a 75% chance. Remember, even if you roll six, it counts. Six or higher. So yeah, 75% chance you're going to get both. Um, that's crazy. Um, what's really important is getting things that allow you to roll more dice which usually is something that blue is very, very good at for giving you like dice roll and bonuses. Red has a little bit of that too, and that's what we're gonna focus on here. So anyway, you can pay for roll a six-sided dice plus an additional six-sided die for each mana from treasure spent to activate this ability. So you kind of wanna like, if you're gonna use this, use a bunch of treasures to try and make treasures, I guess? which if you have extra die rolls, maybe isn't too, too unlikely, especially if you're able to roll maybe two extra dice, you're getting to like, statistically, tactically, you're almost 50-50, right? So you're at least gonna be making that uh, robot creature token anyway, 75 cents. Uh, one last thing I wanna say about this, 9,052 getting up around that 10,000 mark again and uh the roll mechanic i love the roll mechanic people don't like it i think it's great uh originally they had a lot of roll mechanic cards where like if you rolled low you would get something bad i think that kind of uh poisoned the well now the newer ones they don't have knit downsides usually for some of them do most of them do not most of them, yeah, you get the all kinds of great bonuses or even better effects for rolling high. You don't necessarily like get a bad effect for rolling low. Anyway, 75 cents. Okay, will Blade of the Frontiers for one or red, a one, one? If you would roll one or more die, or one or more dice, sorry. Instead, roll that many plus one, ignore the lowest result. This is huge, right, for him. Because, yeah, you want to roll an extra one and ignore the lowest. So that 50-50 of making a... Uh, um, technically, you got a 50-50 of making the robot and a 1 in 6 of getting the robot and the treasure. That just bumps right up. In reality, it's still 50-50, but technically, two 50-50s... Yeah, anyway. Whenever you would roll one or more dice, put a plus one, plus one on Will Blade of the Frontiers. So he's just going to get huge. He's going to get massive. Ah, uh, because you're going to do non-stop rolling, right? You could roll up to five die or dice for um activating the the ability with four treasures, right? You're going to roll a d or five d six basically, and then he'll get five plus one plus ones, and he'll also let you roll an extra d six for every one of those rolls. So yeah, you're rolling 10d6 and taking the five highest, basically is what happens. Whew, yeah, that's gonna be some value. Next up, uh, Barbarian class for one red is an enchantment, a class enchantment. Uh, yeah, if you'd roll one or more die, roll an extra one, take ignore the lowest result. 
So remember, these do stack. If you have Will and this, every time you're supposed to roll one die, you roll three and take the highest one. Oh, yeah. Whenever you roll, and for again, you can level this up. Level up is at sorcery speed. That's the important thing to remember. You can't just like hold up mana and then on someone else's turn, just like level up a bunch right before your turn. That would be great, but sorry, can't do it. For one or red, level two, whenever you roll one or more dice, target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero, and gains menace until end of turn. That can be very, very good, especially again with will. You can give him boost and menace. More importantly, menace. Uh, creatures you control have haste for two and a red. You're just going to give all of your creatures haste. That's always very useful. It doesn't really directly come into play with the with the roll mechanic, but the haste is going to help with the robots at least. Thirty-five cents. Lightfoot Rogue, one and a black for a 2-1 sneak attack. Whenever he attacks, um, roll a d20. So again, rolling the d20 instead of a d6, 75% chance you're getting like your big value out of that. So if you can give this guy some kind of evasion so it doesn't get taken out, you just get to keep attacking over and over and over, like Whisper Silk Cloak or something, then you're just, you're winning. So yeah, 1 to 9, he gains death touch until end of turn. 10 to 19, gets plus 1, plus 0, and gains death touch until end of turn. Or for a 20, he gets plus 3, plus 0, and gains first strike and death touch until end of turn. Oh boy, even I love me some death touch. First strike, death touch. That's a... Uh, that's a... Uh, if they don't have first strike, they're just blocking is like automatically removing the creature from the battlefield. It's like removal, automatic removal. Anyway, 25 cents. The list, seriously, e evil Walt Disney. I know he's probably supposed to look like that, but I, I'm still taking it back. All right, so Roxanne, Starfall Savant, $1. Admiral ba Brass, Unsinkable, 30 cents. Megda, Brazen Outlaw, 85 cents. Vihan, uh, Vihan, sorry, Vihan Gold Waker, um, 50 cents. Mr. House, President and CEO, 75 cents only. I thought, I thought he would go up by now. I, I have him in one of my binders and speculating on that one. Anyway, take it easy.